All right, guys, this is John with Liquid Life Gardens. We're out here uh, doing some cleanup. We cut this tree down right here. Uh, as you can see it here, I'm going to dig the stump up with the tractor. I wanted to actually video it before we started, but, um, you know, kind of got carried away with it. My sons are all out here working, three of them. Uh, we're cutting it up and burning it as we go. We're going to do this one, dig it up, and then we're going to do this one. This is actually a bunch of different types of trees all woven in together. So we're going to cut it all down and we're going to dig up its stump. The only thing we're going to leave, we're going to leave the old oak right here. I like this old oak, gives shade, but we're going to cut out all this undergrowth here. All these branches hang low that interfere with my tractor. Clean it up. Clean up all around the base and that. But um, the reason I'm doing this is because if you see my driveway turns pretty sharp to get into that bay over there. What I would like to do is have my driveway shoot like that straight across right here and come right through here right through here of this tree and then just miss the oak behind it all right we, we got them both cut down now uh we're burning as you can see we done burning most of it cut them all up we got that uh, pit just a blazing so hot as soon as they throw it on there it just burns it up so they're feeding it nice and slow. This one had uh, this tree and these, I think these are tallow trees uh, in it. So we chopped both of them down. Kind of, that's, that's the trunk of one of them right there. And uh, we're gonna clean up around here and all this around here. And then we're gonna dig these up with the tractor. Hopefully it goes well, get both of them out and widen my driveway.
getting it. Tilt my tractor right into the hole with it. We're gonna use the front load and just kind of push it off into the burn pile because this is the hole we got left. And you see she was in there good, but it was a lot of sandy lube, so it broke up real easy, dug up real easy. And once I got a good trench around it, got up underneath it some, and started rocking it loose, we was able to take it out. Some pretty good sized roots. That uh, if you if you feather when you're pulling it, whether you're curling your bucket or you're pulling in and or pulling up, when you get hung on something, if you feather your controls, tap them and give that sucker a minute while it's in the fine to just sit there and let that stress on whatever it's caught on sit for a minute, a lot of times it'll loosen up a little bit, especially in the dirt, it'll loosen a little bit, then feather it again, again, and eventually you can loosen up. But you gotta be real careful, you gotta feel your machine you gotta know when it's too much um, to back off and dig some more or come from a different approach. Uh, but feathering uh, your controls and just holding off for a second and just putting it on the bind and just let it sit for a second, let it stretch or let it, the ground release around it, especially your roots. Um, you know, you can feather through and pull through quite a bit of stuff, but uh, without putting the stress on the machine. You always listen to your machine. Your machine will let you know if uh, you're stressing it too hard. Your, your pump will whine too loud, your motor um, will rev up, well, will bog down first, and then the, the governor will kick in, and the motor will rev up to try to make up the difference. Uh, when, you, when you're hearing that, you're already pushing your limits. Uh, so don't, don't go past that, you know, back off, uh, reset, do some more digging, come down a little further, find a weaker spot, whatever you gotta do. But um, when, you, uh, when you feather your controls, you can get away with a little bit more stuff, then, 
happen to this than you normally can because of the <clears throat> because you are just putting it in the vine and just letting it rest there and letting it break that soil loose and then you pull a little bit more let it loose pull a little bit more and just feather your control a lot of big roots in here gonna have to do some serious cleaning out but uh nice sandy sandy loom uh thank goodness it wasn't clay i'd have been on that thing for days trying to get it out of here uh because i had to dig pretty wide pretty deep to get up underneath it uh, up underneath that root ball and as y'all seen it drug uh that's all the backhoe had to get it out and it was still scarring the ground and it tilted that machine big time when it was over this hole a little fight to get it up on there get loaded because i, I just didn't realize how heavy it was and uh but if you look, I mean, it's half the tractor, one third. So, hell of a counterbalance. All right, well, we're gonna uh, start up some cross, uh, cross ties. We're gonna move on to the other one, start digging in. Let's see if I can get it done before dark. That's a beast. Do you feel that tractor? Yeah. There she goes. I don't expect this one to be as hard because it's just this tree right here. That one there had a couple of big old, I believe that was pallet trees that were floating in there. So it had a enormous size of people. You've seen the tree with the stone that was sticking out. So I'm hoping this one ain't going to be as bad. But to be honest, that was the coolest shit you ever seen when I picked up that stuff and the whole track said, whoo! And this bad boy still pulled it out. That wasn't cool. That was that was awesome. No. Nope. Uh, that was just just awesome. Uh, when we tilted in, I had to set my outriggers back down. I knew I could swing away to one side and get over the ground, but at that point, I didn't think she had enough power to pull to move it actually at that point. It was up and out and on the ground, but but uh, just I didn't think it was going to be able to do it, and uh, she did. She mowed it, pulled it on down, and. Uh, we got to the point where we couldn't pull it no more. She was bottoming out because we dropped to the low spot and she was still in the high spot. But then uh, I just took a funny loader, rolled it on over there, and pushed it off into the burn pit. And now she's going to be careful. So, so let's get this one shot and hopefully this one goes a lot better. I got a heck of a hole to feel like in over there. It was a one heck of a roof off.
All right, as you can see, guys, two big old holes, two gigantic stumps. It dug it up. Did a fantastic job quickly, too. Uh, got them in the burn pit, and um, tomorrow I'll do some backfilling. Uh, I'm going to need a lot of dirt for this hoe. So this John will look like gardens, and uh, we're going to give her a rest for tonight. She's earned it. Uh, she's tired like I am, and she ain't as old as me. So we're going to call it a night. Y'all have a good night. All right, guys, this is what it looks like. Uh, I wanted to film me dressing it up. But uh, my battery ran low on the phone and uh, it was almost dead so I couldn't do it and I couldn't wait because it was getting dark for it to charge. But um, here it is, if you remember there were two big old trees, one right here, uh, multiple stock tree and then one over there with several different kind of trees growing in it and uh, the stumps are still burning in the pit over there. But um, you know, we got it cleared out, I got it dressed, got it leveled back off, all backfield in. And uh, looks really good. Now I'll be able to widen my driveway because I'll be able to come from here and shoot towards the white truck there, right at the corner there, and make that whole driveway much wider so we can get at least two to three cars in here. We can get two cars now, but it's tight. But I want to get three cars in here uh, with ease and be able to pull up to the shop with ease. So we'll widen it out coming from the corner, the uh, driver corner there of the white truck all the way down back to the building. So, but um, that's her. Another job done with the Massey. Uh, she handled it like a pro.